Hi, I'm Dr. Nathan Ritter from CardioGage.com. I'm a cardiologist in New York. This video is about coronary artery calcium scoring. This is a test that shows how much calcium is in the arteries that go to the heart. It's a marker for atherosclerosis. So if there's a lot of coronary calcium, that implies that there's coronary artery disease, which is basically made up of cholesterol buildup on the sides of the arteries. And then um, over time, calcium gets put on top of the cholesterol buildup, and it's an indicator that there could be a problem. So here's some examples of some calcium scans. This is what the arteries should look like. There's no calcium in the arteries, no bright spots. That's how those uh, the calcium shows up on the CT scan. And here's an example of severe coronary calcium you can see that there's a lot of white throughout the arteries, and that's abnormal. Here's an example of mild coronary calcification. The way the test is done is a person goes through a CT scanner, and they uh, basically have to hold their breath, typically while the scan's being done, um, but it's really quite simple from a patient perspective. It, it generally costs from $100 to $700. Uh, where I'm at, it costs $100, but it would be possible to get ripped off and be charged $700, I suppose. The insurance companies generally don't cover the cost of the test. The main use for this test is to decide if a person has high risk for getting a heart attack or a angina or a stroke or stent. Uh, it's to predict if a person's going to have a problem. So if there's a lot of coronary calcium, the person's got higher risk. If there's no coronary calcium, the person's at lower risk. And frankly, the most useful uh, aspect of the test is if you have a coronary calcium score of zero, then you're at very low risk. So for my patients, I'll generally use it in somebody who appears to have moderate or high risk for blockage based on statistics, just their age and their blood pressure, whether or not they're a smoker, etc. And to uh, take that person and, and do the calcium score, then you know about their risk a lot more. Um, General doctors will often put numbers into the computer and basically get a recommendation of whether or not a person should be on a medication and then offer the medication to the patient. So that happens all the time. There's so many millions of people who fall in the category of being intermediate to high risk. And a lot of people are dissatisfied with that, understandably, and would like to know better what their risk is. So that's a person where the calcium score really comes into play. So we do the calcium score. If it's zero, then that person's risk is really low. You've got no calcium in your arteries when you're 45, 50, 60 years old. That's a really good sign that over the next 10 to 15 years, it's unlikely that you would have something bad happen to you. So it's a pretty useful test, and um, in, uh, in quite a few patients, I, f I find it that it, it's helpful. Um, I've had patients go both ways with it where, where they'll have a score of zero and then we don't have to worry about treating. And then I've had patients who will have a surprise, very elevated score, and then that motivates the treatment. What are some drawbacks? Uh, well, uh, there are two main drawbacks from my point of view. Number one is you get radiation when you have a calcium score. And believe it or not, it's about somewhere around a year's worth of radi radiation that you would get naturally from the sun. And um, so that, when you hear that, a sounds like a lot. Um, it is a fair bit, but it has very low risk as far as we know. Um, it's not something that I could prove to you um, was entirely safe, but we just don't see a signal that a uh, radiation dose like that is going to change somebody's outlook uh, frequently. So it would be very unlikely for it to cause cancer. But it is about a year's worth of radiation. <clears throat> um, in some places they could do it with less six months or three months worth of radiation, but it's on that order of magnitude. The second thing with calcium scoring that I see, which is a drawback, is it can make people worried, make people anxious about having a stroke or heart attack more, than, more so than they already were. So they were hoping for reassurance with the calcium score. They were hoping for a zero, and instead we got a 70 or a 200 or, or, or something you know, high. And that would indicate that uh, they should do something different with their lifestyle and possibly take medication. Uh, but they worry about the idea that there's calcium in there and, and constantly worry that something bad's going to happen to them and that uh, all that worrying and anxiety is a very negative thing. Um, I've seen that happen a couple of times where... Uh, ultimately, we decide, geez, you know, it would have been better if we if we didn't know that. But bottom line is, it's better to know than not know, generally, um, for something like this, because it's such a common problem. I've ordered uh, calcium scores on people in my family. I've recommended it. 
for multiple people in my family because there's a family history of coronary blockage. So we use the calcium score to see if there was high enough risk to warrant medication. There's a great website for looking at what your calcium score means in terms of numbers. Uh, I'm gonna put the link in the description below. And if you go there and you have a calcium score number already, you can put that number in along with your other numbers and it will tell you your, your risk uh, over the next 10 years for heart attack, stroke, or stent. And that can be pretty useful. Um, it helps you understand where you're at and whether or not medication would make sense for you or if you saw a high percentage risk, it might motivate you to do better with your lifestyle choices. So that wraps it up for calcium scoring. Please hit like and subscribe. It helps get the feedback. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll try to answer them. If there's a specific topic you'd like a video on, let me know and I'll do my best to produce it for you.